This is a stimulus check update in Daily News Report. Looks like another state is going to give a round of retroactive stimulus checks, making it the second state to do so. I'll give you the details of those two states. We'll also go over the latest stimulus check articles. Millions of Americans may get another round of stimulus next year, thanks to a $31 billion in surplus funds. Also, this one, $1,100 surprise stimulus check this December. Will it hit your bank account? Also, will those who receive Social Security benefits be getting a fourth stimulus check? Also, give you the latest on the Build Back Better plan. The former Obama advisor doubles down and says that the Build Back Better plan is not a good idea. Also, there's some big changes that's going to happen to the bill. I'll play with the clip of what a Democrat senator says. And when it comes to insulin prices, it looks like it's going to go down according to the Build Back Better plan. I'll give you all those details plus some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a terrific Tuesday. If you appreciate the fact based, fast paced updates, hit the like button down below. And I'm giving $200 to my subscribers in just a couple couple days of details to that down in the description below. But first, I'll give you the stimulus check news first. So millions of Americans may get another round of stimulus next year, thanks to $31 billion surplus funds. So what this is talking about is in California. Basically, California is having a $31 billion surplus and they're thinking, they're assuming in this article that because there is a surplus, they're going to give more stimulus checks out, which is what they did last time, but it all depends on other conditions and other variations. So it's making an assumption that just because there's a $31 billion surplus next year, that more stimulus checks will go out. It may or may not be the case, but just wanted to clarify that for you. Also, $1,100 stimulus check this December, will it hit your bank account? So this is talking about those California stimulus checks the second round that's going out slowly going out to people it's being mailed out i don't think it hit everybody yet so that's what this is talking about when it comes to the 1100 stimulus checks that are being mailed out uh, in december and then this article right here will those who receive so social security benefits be getting a fourth stimulus check so this is referring to the senior citizens league's effort to try to convince congress of giving 1400 stimulus checks to seniors collecting social Social Security. At this point, we haven't seen a $1,400 stimulus check enter that bill, even though they've tried to do it. They've had the petition as well as other Ford stimulus check efforts. So there's no general Ford stimulus check or targeted for Social Security recipients at this point. Although they probably should expand that and make it for a lot of other fixed income receivers as well, not just social, uh, not just seniors, but also disability, veterans, among all those other categories. Uh, but that's just my opinion opinion. Anyways, let's get into the retroactive stimulus check. So California becomes the second state to give those retroactive stimulus checks. So what's going on here? California Employment Development Department announces another opportunity to seek pandemic unemployment assistance benefits. So that's the PUA, which is the federal unemployment boost that was maybe around $300 per week for several different weeks. And now this is going to go out to approximately 100,000 claimants in California who were previously denied one or more weeks of federal unemployment, uh, pandemic unemployment assistance, PUA, to potentially obtain those benefits under federal rules that expanded eligibility for the program. So this could be anywhere from three to $600 checks because they're retroactive for a lot of different people who were denied PUA in the past, but now they fixed something and now they're going to give those checks for the weeks that were not given through PUA. So uh, those could be a lot. Of, that's actually a lot of people getting uh, big checks right there, 100,000 people. So uh, it says that if People in California were notified and they have to respond to that email about it in order to receive it. Uh, so another ch another state that's giving something similar is the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services contacting 5,000 Ohioans denied pandemic unemployment assistance who may be eligible under new guidance. So I mentioned this the other day, approximately 5,000 Ohioans who were previously denied pandemic unemployment assistance may be eligible to receive benefits retroactively as a result of additional COVID-19 reasons established by the Department of Labor. So looks like we got two states now. Ohio was the first one about a week ago. Now it's California, just announced it yesterday. This may cause a domino effect where more states are going to give retroactive checks from the uh, PUA program. So now we have two states so far, uh, Ohio and California. I'll keep you updated if there's any more unemployment updates like that. Uh, next, 
Let's talk about the Build Back Better plan, what's going on with that. So looks like paid leave immigration could be on the chopping block. What's likely to change as Senate Ways Build Back Better Act? So it looks like there could be a lot of different changes when it goes to the Senate, gets chopped up, gutted, voted on, and then back to the House. And the House has a choice of whether or not to vote on it or change it again. Uh, it's going to be a lengthy process at this point. Here is Senator John Tester talking more about what could change in the bill. Uh, you're going to be, the Senate now has the president's build back better. Uh, it's now up to you guys. Um, is this a pass anything that can get 50 votes? I mean, is that where we're at at this point? Or are there some, hey, I'm only going to support this. You know, if this gets taken out, I can't support this bill. Where's your head in this? And where are the Democrats' heads? Well, yeah, look, I, I think there's, uh, we have a great opportunity here to do some great things in child care and affordable housing and in climate and lowering pres prescription drug costs and health care costs overall. And I think we can do it. Uh, I don't I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think people need to be open to compromise. Uh, and, and I think if we compromise like we did in the bipartisan infrastructure package where we had five Democrats and five Republicans that, mm -hmm. you know, argued and fought and, and came to a bill that would work, I think it's the same thing within the 50 Democrats, too. We don't all see the world the same way. So let's let's negotiate and let's come up with a bill that lowers costs for families and cuts taxes and and gets things done to help move this economy forward so we can stay the premier power in the world. China wants to supplant us. Yeah. If we don't tend to business here, they well could do that. So this Build Back Better is an important piece of legislation. So it sounds like you're going to be a supporter of it, regardless of what it looks like in the details? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, we, it's going to come over from the House. There's going to be some changes. I'm going to compare it to what Montana needs, yeah. and uh, and that's going to be uh, where I focus on. And But look, uh, we're dealing with reasonable people here. I think we can come up with a bill that is right. a very, very good bill that works for states like Montana and other states in the union. Senator John Tester is for the Build Back Better plan. He's in the Senate, says that there's probably going to be some changes. Now, I want to give you the other perspective, Republicans' perspective, but also not just the Republicans' perspective, but people who are against the Build Back Better plan. So former Obama advisor doubles down on criticism of Biden's Build Back Better, says it will add to deficits. So this is a Democrat who is opposing and criticizing the Build Back Better plan. Here's what he has to say about that and why it may not be the best idea. Okay, so so the next question is, uh, given your concerns about inflation and, and concerns that, uh, as you said, the New York Times, you shared with this administration, uh, that Larry Summers shared with this administration, uh, what is the impact of another $150 billion in, in deficit spending, uh, short term and long term, over the next five years to inflation? Yeah, I, I would. I would not want to suggest that an economy the size of our economy, uh, 150 billion dollars of deficit spending in a given year, is going to be massively inflation. That would be irresponsible of me to suggest. I'm simply. I'm simply suggesting that when you have an inflationary pressure, uh, as we well do, and as everyone can see, the last thing you want to do is add to it. Uh, if you're basically promising the American people a balanced program that where you're not going to add to the deficit, and this has been one of the administration's biggest selling points, that it's not going to add to the deficit, then you have to have a program that reasonable people could look at and say it's not going to add to the deficit. And when you see it all front-loaded spending and back-loaded revenues, it's very hard to see that it doesn't add to the deficit. So you have a, a, a modest increase in inflation. I don't want to overstate that, but a substantial increase on, in fiscal responsibility, we're setting the stage essentially for trillions of dollars of more government deficit and debt. So what are your thoughts on that? Former Obama advisor saying that the Build Back Better plan is going to make inflation worse. What do you think about that? That's a, a Democrat, you know, a much different perspective than the other Democrats have. So let's talk about how this could change people's lives uh, also. So here's how Medicare could change if Build Back Better spending bill becomes law. So what could happen here is the measures would allow the federal government to negotiate pharmaceutical prices with the manufacturers under Medicare's Part D prescription drug coverage. Uh, so here's this video clip right here from one Congress member who's saying that 
it could change people's lives because of the decreased price of insulin as well as other medication that save people lives. Take a look at this clip right here. On Friday, every House Republican voted against the life-saving provisions in President Biden's social agenda bill, highlighting one of those life-saving provisions. President Biden wrote this on Twitter. Millions of folks across the country have diabetes, sometimes paying around $1,000 a month for insulin. It's outrageous. With my Build Back Better Act, we're going to ensure no one will pay more than $35 a month for their insulin. Before the bill passed, House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy spoke on the House floor for eight hours and 32 minutes to try to stop the Build Back Better bill, which is a bill that will save lives. Our next guest, Democratic Congressman Kim Schreier of Washington, is a pediatrician and has type 1 diabetes, which requires her to take insulin. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Kim Schreier of Washington State. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, take us through this provision on insulin, how it works, what it means to Americans, and what it personally means to you. Lawrence, thank you for having me. This is a really big deal. I, I want to, I thought, you know, how do I communicate uh, how much insulin is in a bottle. And I thought I would just bring one bottle out and show you, it is tiny. There's two teaspoons that fit in a bottle of insulin. And the price of this, boy, I've had diabetes for 37 years. I remember when it was about $10 a bottle. In the year 2000, it was about $40 a bottle. And now this same bottle of insulin is over $300. And that has moved it from being a medicine that is affordable and life-saving to unaffordable and life-threatening. And so we hear about people rationing their insulin or even dying because they're waiting for their next paycheck. And $35 a month insulin is affordable and will save lives. The, to, to see the price go in 20 years uh, from $20 to $300 is a form of inflation that Republicans don't seem to care about at all. Well, I hate to be able to, to speak for Republicans, but I would say that, you know, insulin is a particularly egregious example as, of what has happened with drug pricing in our country. It is not the only medication that has gone uh, out of control in terms of pricing, uh, but we have a system that is um, opaque to say the least and where there's a lot of hands along the way that are taking profit while the American people pay prices that are three to four times higher than the rest of the world. And insulin is pr particularly egregious. So how is this going to work? If I'm, if, if, if I'm a diabetes patient now, and I'm presumably I'm, I'm getting some, if I'm lucky, I'm getting some kind of coverage for this in my health insurance. How is, that, how is it going to work for me? Uh, so if you're a patient now, you are paying a copay or a coinsurance when you go and pick up your medicine. If you're a person with a high deductible, you're going and you are paying full cost uh, until you get up to your deductible. And uh, now you will pay no more than $35 per month. And that is a really big deal. You know, the people who pay the most for insulin are those without insurance and those with high deductible insurance. And uh, this is going to particularly help them. There's uh, one survey indicated that about 25% of the patients in this country have to hoard or manage their insulin supply in some way, not use, use less of it uh, on schedule than they are supposed to. Yeah, let me explain what that means. You know, you need a certain amount of insulin just to stay alive. But to have really good control, to have the kind of control that will keep you healthy for many years, that will keep you out of the hospital, that we have you living a long productive life, you need more insulin and you need to use it carefully. And so, um, you know, the notion that people are rationing at the end of the month, um, that means they are compromising their health. And when that happens, ultimately we all pay because they end up in the hospital and, uh, and, and you know, none of us should tolerate that. What are your thoughts on that? If your medication bill was a, was limited to $35 a month, would that change your life? Are you pay, paying a lot of money for medication at this point? Is insulin really expensive for you on a monthly basis? Let me know your thoughts on all that down in the comments below. And that is all the stimulus news I have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, it's Bella's tip of the day. I want to tell you the one thing that you should do. Do the things that scare you the most because the, after you do that, you become a better person. Bye.
Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all of your support. Don't forget, I'm giving out those $200 checks. And check out this video up here. It's on my Wise Buys channel. It's with my wife, Christine, Bella, and Kalea giving a review of their favorite snack. It's this chickpea snack. Uh, so if you want to see the family interacting and giving a review of that snack, check out that video up here. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Be safe. Thank you for watching.